my heart. Hallelujah. Nehemiah chapter 3 verse number 3. We are going to read from number 3. Going down. Praise God. I'm talking about the 12 sheep girds. The 12 sheep girds. The 12 sheep girds. And we are going to read also John chapter 10 verse 21. Going down there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. As I'll be preaching, I don't want your mouth to be quiet. If you are quiet, you'll make me feel boring. Hallelujah. Are you there? Nehemiah chapter 3. Jesus. Jesus, there is something about that name, Savior, Savior. Are you there? Are you there? Hey, you don't know where Nehemiah is? Nehemiah. 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 I know, I know some of you, the teachers that taught you English, they had a bad pronunciation. Nehemiah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Nehemiah. No, it's Nehemiah. <laughs> Tell about it's Nehemiah. Not Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter number three. Verse number one. Praise God. I want one pastor to take the microphone and read it on top of their voices. Thank you, General. Yes. Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 1. Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they built the ship gate. They sanctified it and set up doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mir, they sanctified it unto the tower of Hananiel. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho. And next to them builded Zaku, the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hasana build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Memoth, the son of Uriah, the son of Kos. And next unto them repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshazebel. Then next to unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Ban. And next unto them the Tokites repaired, but the no, their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehuda, the son of Pasa, and Meshulam, the son of Besodia. Okay. They laid the beams thereof. Okay. I want you to read Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 32. 32. I want us to look at something. 32. Verse 32 reads, uh -huh. And between the going up of the corner unto the ship gate, repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. Let's go to 32 together. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to break a lot of scriptures tonight. Are you there? Hmm? Let's read verse 32 together. One, two, three, go. And between the going up of the corner unto the ship gate, repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. Okay, the first thing that we see in this scripture, I'm talking about the 12 sheep gate. Lift your right hand and shout the 12 sheep gate. 12 sheep gates. Now, the things of God, they don't just happen just like that. God does not just bless you on the blessings of his blessing. No. God does not bless you because you are, you are knowledgeable. He does not bless you because you are wise. There are systems. There are laws, regulations that God has placed in place for your blessing. That's a reason you come to discover every blessing of God has a condition. 
So he will not just bless you. But he wants you to adhere to the condition of the blessing. He will not heal you until you adhere to the condition of healing. Whenever the doctor gives you medicine, he will give you how to use it and when must you use it. Amen. And that's the same way God is. Whenever he wants to bless you, he will allow you to see the blessing. But before you take the blessing, he will tell you these are the things to do. Amen. So there is no one who is blessed just like that. Everyone who is blessed, if you look at their lives in one way or another way, they have adhered to divine instructions. That's the reason divine instructions, these are gateways to a world of possibility. Instructions, these are what? Keys of, these are easy keys to operate in the world of possibility or the world of uh, 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 the supernatural. Amen. So God is a supernatural God. He's a God of principles. He's a God of who does not work outside this principle? That's the reason the book of Psalms, he says, he has exalted his word above his names. Which means God respects his principle. God respects his principle. Now, the book of Matthew chapter 6, I don't want you to go there. The book of Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says, seek first. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Every kingdom has a king. And every king has domain. Amen. And there is no way a king can dominate without a kingdom. And every kingdom has people. And the kingdom of God is a kingdom of priests and kings. Amen. I repeat again. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of priests and kings. Kings, Amen. which means we are not just a people, but we are people born out of the blood filled with loyalty. Amen. So we are people of the kingdom. If we are people of the kingdom, then there is no kingdom without rules and regulation. Amen. That's the reason here in South Africa, there is laws placed in place. The law is not there to kill you. The law is there to defend you and protect you. Amen. And that's the reason if somebody steals, if somebody steals, the law will take its own charge on him. Now, if you steal, the law will decide to rehabilitate you or to work on your mind by taking you to prison. Amen. Not that they are punishing you, but it is part and parcel of deliverance. Amen. Because deliver... Oh, you are not hearing Amen. this. Amen. It is part and parcel of what? Deliverance. Yes. Because if they leave you outside the prison, people will kill you. Amen. True. So, the country has principles. On the road, there is principles. There are laws of traffic. If you must... If you must if you must stay away from problem on the road, then every time carry your license. Amen. So the God that we serve is a principled God, Amen. is a God of laws. Amen. Now, the first law that we are going to look at. Now, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. It is different. They are Even before he created the heaven, God was still somewhere. Amen. You're not hearing this. Amen. You are not hearing this. God does not stay in heaven. God does not stay in heaven. Heaven was created for men. Amen. Not that God stays in heaven. <laughs> Tell me about God is not in heaven. God is not in heaven. Tell me about God is not in heaven. God is not in heaven. If, okay, let's define the word God. He that has got no beginning, no the end. Before the beginning began, he began the beginning. Before he finishes, he starts. Before he starts, he ends. 
So before he started creating heaven, he was already in heaven. Amen. So heaven, the heaven that is being talked about, it is the heaven where all of us, when we die, remember they will be dying, eh? Oh. They will be dying. If you don't know, a time will come you will die. I'm telling you, even if God adds 150 years, you will still die. Amen. A time is coming that everyone is going to die. To die. And after death, there is a place that God Almighty has prepared. And that place is called heaven. Amen. So heaven is a place after eternity. So there is a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of heaven, this is a place after eternity. Amen. And the kingdom of God, these are systems that will allow you to enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. So before you enter the place, before you enter the place, there are rules and regulations. God has put in place Things he has said I've put before you life and death. Choose life. He gives you an advice. He said choose what? Choose life. Because this is the way he works. He does not work like Satan. That's the reason every government and every country, the way they operate is different. And the same way God, the way he operates is different. That's the reason if you want him to bless you, then you must be able to understand how he operates. And how he operates these are systems. And the first system that we are going to look at, it is a system of the ship gate. Lift your right hand and say the ship gate. The ship gate. Shout it again. Come on. The ship gate. Shout it again. The ship gate. So before you enter heaven, there is the first law that has been placed, which is called the ship gate. There is about 12 12 gates before heaven. Oh, you are not hearing this. Amen. Before you reach heaven, you must go through 12 gates. And most of you, you only pass through one. And the other one, you dodged. Turn about you dodged. Turn about you dodged. You dodged. You dodged. You dodged. In the things of God, there is nothing like dodging. Because, my adoba, I receive. Mm. Should I teach you this? Yes, Papa. Some of you to teach you. I don't want to cast my revelation on pearls. On swines. Jesus said, do not cast that which is holy. To what? To dogs. Dogs. So revelation is very important. Amen. Can I teach you? Teach us, General. In the spirit. In the realms of the spirit. One thing that you must know. You know, people, they think they are very close to God. People, they think they are very close to God. That's the reason you don't need any man. In the realms of the spirit, there are 21 levels. Or there are 21 dimensions. And the dimension that I'm operating in is dimension number 11. Now, remember that heaven God did not just create heaven. But God created the heavens. Go to Genesis chapter 1. Chapter 1. Go there. Hurry up. Come on. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens, not the heaven. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens, not the heaven. Which means there were a lot of heavens that were created. Those are dimensions. Amen. And every heaven, it had its own, its own work. Which means, there is, I receive. When Satan was casted down here, in the process of falling, the man destroyed a lot of heavens. The man was so heavy. 
The man was so much heavy to the point that he destroyed a lot of heavens and we remained with three. Three heavens. So there was a lot of heavens and because of this man called Dijabulos and Lucifer, he destroyed a lot of heavens and the heavens they are called realms and dimensions. Amen. That's the reason when you enter in that realm that is called a heaven, you don't return. You don't know. When you die, you enter heaven. You don't return. Amen. There is also a realm of hell. There is a realm of hell. Once you enter there, the door has been closed. No return. Amen. So there is about 21 levels spiritually. And the hell is one of them. Hell is one of them. And once you enter in that realm, the door closes for you. You become part and parcel. Of their world. That's a reason. Whenever you die. You leave your body. Where? On the realm. Oh. On the earthly realm. Amen. You don't understand this. Amen. You live where? Your body from the what? Earthly Amen. realm. Where it came from. And in. Look. So you are coming from one. You are leaving your body. Into the earthly realm. Yes, Papa. Hey, do you see that? Yes, Papa. So there's about 21 realms. And each and every person here, there is a realm they are operating in. Amen. But let me not go there. Now, before you reach heaven, which is your destination, there is about two of gates. Placed in front of you for test and investigation. You will never enter heaven if on the gate of heaven there is an angel in charge. You will never enter heaven as a thief. Why? You are not hearing this. You will never enter heaven as a robber. Amen. You will never enter heaven as, as, as a gossiper. Why? It is not needed in that realm. Amen. Once they will check your pocket, they will check, they will evaluate you. Put you on a scale. That's the reason some of you, when you reach on the realm of a heaven, even the Bible says there is a book of evaluation of deeds. So before you enter heaven, heaven is a final destination. Amen. But before you reach there, there are two of gates that God has put in place for you to pass through for verification. And the first gate that we are looking at, it is a gate which is called the sheep gate. Right? The sheep gate. Before you enter heaven, sir, God does not want you to be a God. Amen. Tell me, are you a God? Are you a man? Ask me, are you a man? Ask me, are you a man? God, look, even in the book of Revelation, he said, I am coming to separate the sheep from the God. Amen. If you look at the sheep and the gods, they have got different characters. Different characters. Different personalities. Which means, before you enter heaven, God will first check your character. Are you a god or are you are a sheep? Amen. Read the book of uh, John, chapter 10, verse number 21. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, my sheep... He was not referring to someone's sheep. So which means even the devil has got a sheep. Read verse number 20. Are you there? I'm there, Papa. One, two, three, go. Come on. And many of them said... Hey, 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 hey. Come on, read for me. One, two, three, go. And many of them said, He heard the devil and his man. Why hear ye him? Others said... These are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? 
And it was at Jerusalem, the first of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around him and said unto him. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, leave that scripture. Let's go to verse number seven. Verse number seven. Okay, then let's Jesus start from, said wait, unto wait, them. Wait, wait, let's start from number two. From number two. Listen, let's read it. One, two, three, go. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To whom they get. Look now, Jesus is going back to Nehemiah now. Before you enter heaven, now Jesus is talking about is talking about the sheep gate. He said, anyone who will not enter from this gate is not needed for heaven. Amen. Read. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Uh -huh. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And now listen. Verse number two, the Bible says, But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse number three, To, to whom the gate keeper opens, the sheep hears his voice. And he calls his own sheep. Okay? He calls his own sheep. Amen. He calls his own sheep. Who? The shepherd. Jesus Christ is a shepherd of the what? The sheep. And before he allows you through the sheep gate, Jesus, he will stand on the door as the great shepherd. To do what? To check. To check your character. To check your giving. To check your heart. You are not hearing this. Amen. He will check. He will check. He will check everything about you. That's the reason in this scripture the Bible says, My sheep. Which means there were some sheep that did not belong to Jesus. Amen. Not everyone here is my sheep. Tell me, but not everyone here belongs to Prophet Didi Isaac. Some of them, they belong somewhere. Jesus said, he said, my sheep, which means there were others. They, don't, they did not belong to him. They were just among. They were among the sheep, which means we can be as a church, but among the church, you have got a real sheep. Amen. You've got a real sheep. That's the reason <laughs> Judas was a sheep. Jesus was a sheep. <laughs> but this sheep, it was a notorious sheep. <laughs> Tell me about notorious sheep. Notorious sheep. Tell me about notorious B.I.G. Notorious B.I.G. <laughs> notorious sheep. Judas was a sheep. But he was among the real sheep. Which means, among the real sheep, we have got fake sheep. Amen. Among the what? Amen. Hey, hey, hey. Tell me about among the real sheep. Amen. We have got fake sheep. That's the reason you need to understand, child of God, that when you come to church, there are some people, there are some women, there are some men in the church who are fake. Amen. Very fake. Very fake. They are fake plastic people. Yeah, yeah, people. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Amen. Judas was a fake disciple. Fake disciple. Yet he was being found with Jesus every day. Now, let me tell you, the spirit, look, look, look. The spirit of Judas is not afraid of the Messiah. It is the only spirit that was able to terminate the life of Jesus at 33 years, premature death. Judas was not a sheep. He was a fake sheep, but he was eating with the Messiah. Walking with the Messiah. In fact, even the Messiah, I'm asking Jesus, Jesus, why can't you see how come that you are even entrusting this man with money? Amen. Judas was a chief accountant. The man was so much prophetic to the point that when they brought offering to Jesus, 
The Bible says when this woman brought the fine perfume, when Judas saw it, he said, Master, oh, this one, I saw it in the shop. It is very expensive. Why can't we sell it? Money-minded, business-minded. There are some certain kind of sheep that are around you. They are not spiritual. They are business-minded. Amen. Not <laughs> so the sheep I will put you I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. What, what I blocked you? I'm looking at you. How you behave. Amen. A sheep must be let me tell you, never, how do you check the sheep? Stand on the gate as a shepherd. Amen. The Bible says the sheep gate, the sheep gate, it was, it was, it was a place where the sheep could pass for sacrifice. So before you are sacrificed, remember that in the Old Testament, you can never give a sacrifice with blemish. Before you give the sacrifice, the sacrifice must be evaluated. Amen. Not a sacrifice which is lame, not a sacrifice which is blind, not a sacrifice which is deaf. Amen. God is not looking for deaf sacrifice. You are a sacrifice of the Lord. Amen. The perfect what? Sacrifice. Amen. So before you take, before he takes you, he needs to check you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Turn it back. I must be evaluated. I must be evaluated. So Jesus said, my sheep, my sheep, they know my voice. Amen. They know how I operate. Amen. They know who I am. My sheep know, which is knowledge. Oh, oh. no Amen. prayer here. Oh, you are not hearing this. Amen. He said, my sheep, they have knowledge. They have knowledge of who I am. In the same scripture, if you read down, you will see Jesus is provoked. He's now asking a question. He said, you disciples, what do you say I am? What do you know about me? And all of them, mumushas. They, they became mumu. Yet they were walking with Jesus. Going to the mountain with him. They did not know him. Amen. So, walking with Jesus does not mean you know him. So, as a sheep, you must have the knowledge of your shepherd. Amen. Now, before, before you take your sacrifice, the shepherd will stand to evaluate, to check your sacrifice. That's the reason the sheep gate, it is the first gate that we use when we got born again. Amen. When we got born again, we went through the sheep gate and Jesus Christ being the high, uh, being the shepherd, being the shepherd, he had to check our prayer life. Amen. He had to check how we give. Amen. He had to check our punctuality. Amen. He had to check how we are committed to church. Amen. It is a place of evaluation. Amen. He checks how you respect your pastor. Amen. He checks how you respect prayer. Amen. He checks how you respect your spiritual mother. Amen. He checks how you respect pastors. Amen. Amen. So if you have not gone through this gate, you have not yet matured. Amen. Because it is a place where Jesus, he will check you. Amen. He will check you. And as a reason, this gate, this gate, it is a gate where you just got born again. After getting born again, now, there is a, there is a pastor that has been given to you. He checks you. He calls you. He calls you. He prays for you. He tries to find out how, what is happening in your life. It is a place of evaluation. Amen. It is a place of report. That's the reason most of you, God cannot use you because you are too big to even bring a report. Amen. You are too big. That's the reason. Any pastor who cannot bring a report to the founder, that pastor is a bad one. It's a bad one. They are good one and bad one. Bad one. Tell your neighbor, good pastor, good pastor, and bad ones. And bad ones. It is a place where God will put you under somebody, under somebody, and take instruction Amen. from Him. Say the ship gate. The ship gate. Say I'm going through the ship gate. I'm going through the ship gate. Come on, shake your neighbor. Tell them I'm going through the ship gate. I'm going through the ship. If you have got a mouth, tell your neighbor I'm going through the ship gate. That's why the sheep get you. You want to save me? I will first check you. 
I'll check. I'll check. I'll check you. <laughs> Say, Papa, I'm your son. You wish is that? Say, Papa, 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 Didi. Where? For where? I'm a son of Papa Didi. I will check you. Let me tell you. And most of you, let me tell you. Prophets. Prophets. Prophets are dangerous. Go out. Go out. You know what I've done here? Eh? Even the heaven has fired him. Even the heaven. He can go. Even the heaven has fired him. It may look to be very simple what I've done here. Earth has fired him. Heaven has fired him. Just because of that word of a prophet, you go. That's a reason. Come. Come. Come back. Run. Sit. Whatever he will do, if you can listen to men of authority, then heaven, which is the overall authority, can listen to you. Amen. 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 The problem you think you are too close to God. You don't know that the God that you are praying is in a man. Amen. Tell about the God you are praying to is in a man. The God that you are praying to is in the man. Tell about the God that you are praying to is in a man. The God that you are praying to is in the man. Jesus had to come. God Himself, He had to come in a man. Amen. In the form of a man. Amen. And the man began to claim that this one is a Christ, Amen. the Son of the Living God. You know what I've done here? I've checked you. I've checked you. And what you've done spiritually, it has a meaning. Amen. 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 There is nothing. Listen, the Bible said there is nothing new under the sun. Which means whatever you are doing, somebody outside there has ever done it before. Amen. No latest car. Amen. Every latest car is simply a copy. You talk about Mercedes Benz. There was a there was a Mercedes Benz in the Bible. The Bible says the, the wise men they were following a star. A star. What is the sign of a Mercedes Benz? You are following a star. Amen. Ah, you are not hearing this. Amen. You are following a star. Amen. And then they come in. So was a king. He was a king, and this king had authority. And the Bible says the prophet went to him. He said, as you are going to the battlefield, don't eat anything. And when he went, he decided to disobey. Now let me tell you, spiritually, it does not matter how big you are. If you are disloyal, very soon you will break. Amen. Amen. Disloyalty is one of the way to break in a twinkling of an eye. The man was a king having authority. Having all the pleasures, all the pleasures. He could not just hear a simple instruction. When you go to the battlefield, don't eat. And he went. His soldiers were hungry. He, they began to push him. Please, let's kill this. Let's kill this cow. They killed and they ate. And when the prophet appeared, he said, so, 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 I can hear the voice. He was not there. <laughs> the prophet was not there. But when he just arrived, he said, he looked at so he said, so, what have you done? So, so, I can hear a voice of a cow crying. Amen. What have you done? And do you know what so did? He had to hold the garment of a prophet and to it. To it. And the prophet said, what you have done, it had a meaning spiritually. Amen. Your kingdom shall be torn in pieces. Amen. Amen. Do you see that? Huh? Come here. Come here. Remove my. You see, this jacket does not belong to him. If I did not give him, the owner will look for it. Amen. That's the reason when you start a chain, a meaning and a replication. Amen. That's the reason you need to understand that a life is more in the spirit than in the natural. Then whatever we do in the natural, it has a replication in the spirit. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen. Amen. 
That's the reason the Bible says, Whatever is bound here on the earth shall be bound. Amen. We just bound you here on earth, and the heaven is bound, is, is tying you up. <laughs> it's my jacket. Amen. Amen. Nice. Power. Amen. Power. Turn about power. Power. I feel very fresh. Amen. Very fresh in the spirit. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, brother. Whatever you look, sucks. David, David gets someone's wife, and the prophet nothing appears. He said, Whatever you have done, your, your, your house iniquity will not depart away from it. Amen. It was a physical reaction, but spiritually, there is a replication. Amen. And the prophet Samuel said, because of what you have done, your kingdom shall be torn in pieces. Amen. It was just a mere word. <laughs> you can go at any time and say, ah, you know, he's lying. He's lying. Ah, he's lying. He's lying. Ah, you know, I've seen a lot of men of God. Ah, you know, they lie. They are some. Kila <laughs> duzalia duzalia. I receive. They are some. Look, 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 look. There are some men of God. When you touch them like this, God will allow you to go free. And there are some of them, they are the apple. Apple of God. Amen. God did not say, thou shalt not touch my pastors. Amen. I don't know why God Amen. is just... <laughs> Have you heard? Amen. He said what? Thou shalt not touch. Hey, did he say, thou shalt not touch my pastors? No. That's not my anointed. Which means everybody who speaks forth is a prophet. Is a prophet. So there are people that when you touch, you can, you can go free. And there are some. You, when you touch them like this, it's like God himself also is coming to touch you. Amen. That's the reason you need to understand when you are going through the ship gate, you need to understand the principle of instruction. There are some certain instructions that I will give you that you will not like it. I will tell you, you must wake up early in the morning. You must pray. You must go for prayer and fasting. You must be early in church. That is an instruction Amen. given by a shepherd. Amen. And if you don't do it, there are some replication. Amen. I'll tell you as a pastor, this is how to live. This is how a pastor must be a man of integrity. Amen. We don't do just ministry for the sake of preaching to people. We do ministry with integrity. Amen. The Bible says a good name is better than fine perfume. Amen. So when you are serving a man of God, you are not just serving without integrity Amen. or character. He, you, you are going to serve a man and he will open up how. Amen. He does this thing. Amen. As a reason, you see me, I'm very different. You are close to me, you don't know me. You are close to me, I don't, you don't know me. I can tell you. No. You don't know my secret. I stayed with some people in, the, in my house. They have never heard me pray. Yet, I'm fresh. Very fresh. <laughs> Go and try it, you. Don't pray in the night. You witch, your witch from your uncle, <laughs> from your grandmother, your great, great, great gra gra grand witch. That night, who come and molest you? <laughs> come and molest you. Dead. Dear people, I don't need to pray. But there is a way how God communicates to me. Amen. That's the reason most of the time I am, I've dedicated my life into fasting. I am not on the side of prayer too much. Because the moment I pray is five minutes. And God answers. Amen. But if I want to know him, I need to give him my life. Amen. And after I give him my life, he will give me his life. Amen. That's the reason you need to understand how 
your prophet is, how he talks, how he moves, how he prays. That's the reason when the, when the disciples of, of Judas, of, of, of John, they come, to, they come to John, he said, Master, Jesus has taught his disciples how to pray. No, no, it was the disciples of Jesus who came, who came to Jesus and asking him, he said, Master, teach us how to pray like the way John has taught his disciples how to Amen. pray. Then Jesus said, when you pray, which means there are different types of prayer, Amen. you must be able to pray like your prophet, Amen. move like your prophet, Amen. intercede like a prophet. Amen. And you listen to me here. Amen. Have the spirit of a prophet. Amen. Your prophet is a lion and Amen. children are chickens. Amen. No. Amen. Power. There is no way you can be a child of a lion and behave like a cheetah, Amen. behave like, like a mosquito. No! Amen. DNA is transferable. Amen. What I do, you can do it. Amen. Who I am, you can become. Amen. Amen. Yes. I see some certain people, the way they behave. I, I say, is this, is this my child or what? You know, there are people who lie. No lie. Hi. They can lie to you to the point that you say, oh, your eye. Lie. Hi. Say lie, lie. Lie, lie. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That's a one. receive is easy. That's the reason whenever I am preaching I like love people to concentrate. I love people to write. I love people. I love people to look at me. I love people to connect to my spirit. Amen. Because this is the spirit that is giving birth to other spirits. Amen. God told Moses, he said, Moses, take, take people that look like you and baptize them in the spirit of Moses. Amen. So there are three kinds of baptism. There is a baptism of fire, there is a baptism of water, and there is a baptism of the spirit of Amen. your servant. Amen. Amen. <laughs> baptism of the spirit of your servant. I said this one when I look at you, I said this one. No. No. Because you have not yet been baptized in my spirit. So on the sheep gate, that's where now the shepherd. Golalia Zibalia. I receive. Parush Idasupa. I receive. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. I receive. The reason why you will not want because there is already direction. Amen. I wonder where I have the anointing and people are busy looking for another anointing. What are you looking for? Eh? What are you looking for? Eh? To Dr. Polokwan. You take your tithe. Eh? You take your tithe to do. I want it today. You every tithe you have ever given to a wrong person, you will bring it on my altar. Amen. I can't be praying for you every night. I'm praying for you, and you are taking your tithe to another man. Amen. You will bring it by force. Amen. Well, you, 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 you. The man that you call a spiritual father. Have you ever seen him? You only saw him on Facebook. He says he's my spiritual father. Where ya? Even when you are sick, did he come and visit you? No. Does he know your name? No. You say, no, no, no. He's my spiritual father. Rubbish. We have come on the level where people, they are selecting spiritual fathers on Facebook. Where? He doesn't know you. He doesn't care. Even when you die in a car accident, he will not call you. He will not call you. That's the reason I said I will me, me. I'm very, I'm a very controversial person. I want a person who can talk to me. Amen. Amen. He said, No, no, my special father, you know, hey, you know, you know, how, how many times have you talked to him? No, you know, I've never met him. What are you doing?
You saw a spiritual father on, on, on TV. He said, ah, that one. Ah, ah. Roka payada. Hey. Ru. Vum. 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 Uena. What are you doing, somebody? You need a man who you can talk to face to face. He needs to understand your heart. He needs to understand who you are. Amen. And whenever you are turning to a spiritual father, come the way you are. Amen. If you are a thief, be a thief. Amen. If you are a robber, be a robber. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. That's a, look, look. That's the reason most of you, you fail to manage spiritual fathers because you are trying to become what you are not. Amen. You are not an angel. You are a human being. Amen. You are, oh, are you listening Amen. to what I'm trying to talk about? Amen. You Amen. make mistakes. You are not God Almighty. You are a human being. Amen. You live in the body. You have a wife. Amen. 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 So why do you want to behave like a Messiah? You are a man. Amen. When you are drinking beer, say, prophet, ah, ah, me, I drink beer. Amen. I need deliverance. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. If you... <laughs> A certain man came to church. This man was very drunk. But when I looked at him, and the Lord, he said, this is your son. And I asked the Lord, Lord, but this one is a drunkard. He said, it's better you have drunkards than to have Judas. Amen. 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 Jeremiah, it's better to have a drunkard husband than to have a Judas in the house. Amen. Are you listening to what I'm talking about Amen. here? You know, you know, you know, let, me, let me tell you, that's the reason you fail to, you fail to, you, you fail to handle a father because you are trying to live a life. The reason why God gives you a spiritual father is because you are not alright. You need direction. Amen. You need a rebuke. Amen. Amen. That's the reason me, I don't love people who are very quiet. Amen. Because the day when they perform a miracle here. I don't love quiet people because they are so problematic. Amen. The day they were impregnant, you said no, not him. Yet is the guy who was doing the work. He was doing the vibration. Are you listening? Amen. It's better to become original. If you know that you have got a problem of anger, go to your spiritual father, your shepherd. He said, please, I have the spirit of anger. Explain to him, this is how I was raised up. These are the mistakes I did. This is how, this is how my life is. And he'll be able to check what kind of a prayer to offer. If you need healing, you pray for healing. Amen. If you need deliverance, you pray for deliverance. Amen. If you need money, you pray for money. Amen. Don't go to a prophet. Amen. When you are sick, you tell him, I need money. Amen. It doesn't work. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. I reached towards a certain woman. I looked at her. I said, What do you want God to do for you? She said, No, I need money. I said, Bamfu. <laughs> I got provoked in my spirit. I saw the woman, she's, she's sick. And she said, You know, I need money. I said, Where? Even if when I give you money, you still, you still want healing. I was praying for a certain man, a billionaire. A billionaire, I went with you. A billionaire. The man is a billionaire. His money cannot heal him. Amen. He needs divinity. Amen. To invade Amen. humanity. Amen. Are you listening? He said, no, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need money. I said, when, when, who bewitched you? is looking for people that are raw and truthful. Amen. The Bible said the truth shall set you free. Whenever you reach towards your prophet, tell him the truth. If you smoked two, don't say one. Amen. That's the reason God gives shepherd. Because on the sheep gate, 
is a place of evaluation. Amen. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd. And the shepherd has got a rod and a staff. If you read the book of uh, 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 Exodus chapter 4, verse 17 to 18, the Bible says, Then Moses, you shall take this rod, for it is for signs. The rod, it is used, the rod is a symbol of authority. Amen. Amen. The staff is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The staff. That's the reason the Bible says, that staff comforts me. The Holy Spirit is, a, is our comforter. Is where we lean on when we are down. Now, the rod is for beating. <laughs> you don't know. That's the reason I will call you. I will even tell you, my son, what you are doing? This, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'll continue repeating. Amen. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You continue doing that. You know what I'll do? Eh? Take this. This. Are you listening? Amen. Even my child, when I'm talking, I'm talking, and he's not listening. I'll take these ears. I say, you. That's what God must do to you. Amen. He has been talking. You don't listen to him. Amen. He must twist your 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 stubborn ears. Some of you have got ears like of a god. He said, don't steal, you are going. No. So the reason why God must give the, the rod to a prophet or to a pastor or to a shepherd is number one for direct for putting the sheep Amen. in direction. Amen. Don't think when you are with me, you only receive appreciation. That's one thing you don't know. Most of you don't know. Don't think when you're with me, you only receive appreciation. Oh, this and... In fact, you have, you have less words of appreciation out of my mouth than words of rebuke. Do you know? Whenever you come to me as a spiritual father, I have a picture of what you are going to become. Amen. So when you say... Dad, I did this. I will not look at what you have done. I will look at what you are going to do. So I will not encourage you because the moment I encourage you, you will be settled and you will sit on one place. Amen. So I must encourage you and push you to another level. That's the reason I will tell you, yes, you have gotten this position, but you must press on for another position. Amen. So the rod is for what? Beating. Oh, you think it's only me? Ask Moses. You know Moses what he did? One day, Moses was very annoyed. He said, God, should I beat these people? <laughs> ah, I'm telling you. Moses, was like, God, should I beat these people? At one inch like this, Moses wanted to take a word. And to begin, say, stand here. You don't listen, you, from the Lord. Imagine if I, one day I came with a big whip. With a big whip. And I begin to put you one by one here. Say, sleep here. You disobeyed God yesterday. It has become now, from the time, jo from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers. Let's, let's bring violence when you disobey God. This church will be half. <laughs> the church will be what? Half. It will be half. Which means people love to be appreciated than to be corrected. Amen. I rebuked one of my sons. I rebuked him. And after rebuking him, he said, I'm going, I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't want you. And I told him, I said, son, the frog has the sauce. And the fish has the sauce. 
And the moment the fish comes out of the source, it dies. Amen. Amen. Not that the water is fighting it, but it is out of its source and where it is going, it will die Amen. automatically. God does not want you to die, but when you come out of your source, even that devil from your uncle, that one that looks like a lizard, I've never seen. The source is the anointing. So, God, whenever you are passing through the sheep gate, the shepherd has the road to ken you. Amen. To ken you. You will see me when I'm when the, the, the worship team they are singing. Just I would I don't talk. I don't talk. I'll just look at you. There's an eye I give you. I'll just give you one eye, you will know. There is a eye. Let me tell you. Prophet and shepherds, they don't speak only with a voice. Amen. Amen. Mm. Mm. You, want, you want me to speak to you? Eh? Huh? Even now I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. Amen. I receive. The problem you expect me only to speak. But you don't know, even when I'm not speaking, I'm communicating. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. This is a problem of women. Have you ever heard a woman say, my husband does not communicate? Eh? You are very foolish. How can you say that? That? How can you say that? Your husband does not listen to you. I came here as a father, your father. I want to correct something. Amen. My husband does not listen to me. For where? How? Your husband, you stay with him. He does not listen to you. Let me, let me show you. My husband does not listen to me. How first? His silence is communication. Amen. Amen. You are not hearing this. His silence, number one, is communication. But you don't want to reach on the point of his level of communication. So he's silent, yet he's speaking. Amen. But you, you want him to leave his position and come to communicate to you. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Are you listening? Are you listening? Amen. So, Every shepherd has a road. So God will make you pass through the what? The sheep gate for evaluation to check your attendance. To check your attendance. To check your holiness. Let me tell you, church is not just coming here, you show. No, 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 no. You must be holy. You must be holy. I know you, you know people, they are very quiet now. Because I'm touching a danger zone here. I'm, I'm, I'm touching some territories that people don't like. They don't like. They don't want to hear. You must be holy in church. Amen. You must be holy. You will check your, you will check your giving. Your giving. Some of you have never grown. The shepherd would stand on the gate. And before the sheep will be sacrificed, before the offering is sacrificed, he will check whether the offering will be acceptable. That's a reason you must, every, before you give your offering, pass through the sheep gate. Amen. Ask yourself, will God accept my offering? From the day I got born again, I've been given 10 rand. Does it mean it's the only money or the only offering? It's only some of you, you have just put it in your mind. When you just, when you just, it's like, when you come to church, you have already changed money. 10, 10 rand. Ten, 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 ten. <laughs> and I say, time for offering. It's like the hand is a prophet of the pocket. <laughs> right away, you'll be like, Pia! Is the hand is so accurate. He does not miss. Pa, he will remove the money. Ten rand. And he would dance a 48 years old man. 
he would dance. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then he would run. And then now he would come. What are you doing? Even David said, I cannot offer that which does not honor and values my God. Amen. So before you give, evaluate your offering. There is a level where God wants you to operate. God does not want you just to give to give the same level. No. Set a standard. Amen. But all these standards, you, you set them when you are going through the what? Sheep the sheep get. Say, I'm going through. I'm going through. Tell neighbor, I'm going through. I'm going through. The sheep get. The sheep get. The sheep get. The sheep get. So this sheep get a prophet. Expect a prophet to shout at you. Amen. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Most of you have seen a lot of daughters of mine. You want to be appreciated a lot. Me. I'll just look at you. Just, I'll be just being looking at you. I'm looking at you. The eye of a prophet can see even when he's not there. Amen. Amen. In fact, I've discovered myself. The moment I'm not there, I hear a lot. Some of, I remember one time I called in the church. How many people were there? I called in the church. I was prophesying on phone. Huh? Yes. I was prophesying on phone, mentioning people's name. I said, there's a man who has entered. Your name is so, so, and so, so. You are coming from. How did I know? Because when I'm far, my sense is very strong. Amen. <laughs> so, don't underlet when I'm quiet on you. I'm looking at you. Even if when I'm looking at this side, my another eye. There is another eye that you don't see. Amen. You see, look, look, I'm looking at this side. I'm looking at this side. I'm able to know whether you're not concentrating. Because my life is a life of, of eyes behind. So even, I remember one time I was praying for people. When I reached towards a certain woman, I wanted to lay my hand. And the Lord said, hey, leave her. I wanted to lay my hand. And the Lord said, Liva, this one, yesterday, she was speaking bad about you. Bad about you. And I just looked at her. I said, you, yesterday, you were with this man. You spoke bad about me. Eh? And when I wanted to lay my hand on you, the Lord wanted to kiss you, but I prayed for mercy. Amen. That's the reason the Lord stopped me. He said, don't. Because every time when you go against the anointing of your servant, the moment he lays his hand on you, it's not a blessing. It's a curse. Amen. That's the reason you must never compromise and contradict and be against a certain anointing. Amen. If you are not, if you are not, if you are not in connection, if you are not in connection, pick your bag, be quiet, go to Jehovah's Witness. Amen. <laughs> Listening. Amen. Go. Go there. Be quiet. Don't talk. Be quiet. Don't begin now to say, no, no, that church is very bad. No, that you are a bad person. You are the one who is a bad person. <laughs> are you listening? Let's look at another gate. I will give you three gates. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read verse. Uh, look, verse number one, the Bible says, Then Elishabab the high priest rose up with the brethren and the priest and they built the ship gate. So the ship gate was the first gate that they built. Isn't it? Hey, isn't it? They sacrificed it. So the ship gate, it was for what? For sacrifice. It was for men who were going through it. For what? For sacrifice. Praise God. 
and set up the doors of it even unto the tower of Mer. They sacrifice it unto the tower of Anna. Verse number two, let's read. Let's read verse number two together. One, two, three, go. And, and the next, next unto, unto him, unto him built, built the men of Jericho, Jericho, and the next and to him builded Zakar, the sons of Erim. Verse number three. But, but the, the fish gate did the sons of Anna build, who also laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof. He locked thereof and uh, the bars thereof. So the next gate is what? The fish, fish gate. gate. Lift up your right and say the fish gate. The fish gate. So after you have gone through the ship gate, God does not want you just to sacrifice your money. God does not want you just to be committed to church. God does not want you just to be a cleaner in the church. God wants you to be a soul winner. Amen. God wants you to evangelize, to be an evangelist, Amen. to use miracles, to use testimonies, to use things that are happening in the church to win people that have never heard about the Lord Jesus, to evangelize to your brothers, to your to your sisters, to your colleagues, to your to your to, to everyone that is around you. That's what God wants you to do. Amen. So the fish gate it is for what it is for so winning. Amen. So the fish gate, this was a she, this was a gate where fishermen were using to go through Jerusalem. Amen. They were bringing in fish. If you say you are born again and you have never brought anyone to church, my brother, you are not yet born again. You are born againist. Tell me, are you born again? Are you born again? Or born against me. That's what, let, let me tell you. The church grows on the platform of the ship, the, the fish gate. Amen. Jesus said, stop everything that you are doing. Then follow me and I will make you to be a fisher of men. Amen. God wants you to be a fisher of men. Amen. To evangelize to your boss. Amen. And the reason some of you why you cannot evangelize to your boss because your boss knows you, you drink. He knows. He knows you. He knows that you are double, double sided, double decker. Double decker, double dealer. Say double dealer. Double dealer. God, devil. God, devil. God, devil. God. <laughs> double dealers are never so winners. God wants you to make up a concrete decision to be born again, not just to be born again, but also to contribute to his kingdom. Amen. And let me tell you. God does not permit barrenness. Anyone who has ever been in church and he has never brought any soul is regarded as a barren man. Amen. And God does not tolerate barrenness. The Bible says any tree that does not bear fruit, he will do what? He will cut you off. He will cut you off. So God does not tolerate barrenness. If you are in church, you have never brought anyone. You don't have that passion to evangelize about the gospel of the Lord Jesus. You know, when I got born again, me, when I got born again, I was like a little bit crazy. When I got born again, it's not that I was drinking. No, I've never drunk before. But when I got born again, and nobody led me to Jesus, I'm telling you, no one led me to Jesus. No one led me to Jesus. Jesus appeared to me. And from that moment, I received him. Amen. And I began to love his things. The moment when I received the Holy Spirit, I was, I was a little bit crazy. My God. I remember those days. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish, and I wish to go to those days. Amen. I could go in the street like this. Go in the street. I would just begin to find people. You, do you know that Jesus loves you? And I would look at beautiful, beautiful, beautiful ladies. Those who are very stubborn. I said, you come here. Do you know that Jesus loves you? Eh? And I say, no, 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 I cannot follow him. I say, you, last year you were bought 17 times. She begin to go, hey, I say, you are a sinner. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> are you listening? Amen. Huh? I could go, I could go in the world to evangelize. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And a lot of people used to follow. 
my phone, my phone was a platform of evangelism. Amen. Some of you, your, your, your phone is a platform of pornography. Your Facebook is a platform of uh, proposing, proposing everyone. Anyone you see, beauty, let me tell you, nowadays, everyone on Facebook wants to furnish their face. Even, eh. <laughs> I saw a certain sister, a certain, a certain sister on Facebook, then she came. I looked at her and said, I was sure. <laughs> that, is, that is being a criminal. What they are doing, you know, what they, <laughs> a lady, she's 68. They will take her for, for makeup. She has got pimples like in Mountain Kilimanjaro all over. I know <laughs> she used she used carolite and the uh, and and the uh, diprozo. Now she has <laughs> now look look she's bent here she's bent here she's bent here even on the nose she's bent. <laughs> and then they will take her they will take her to the what for makeup they will make ah will you know. Hey, they will decorate her. I, I've been told now they are putting now uh, 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 artificial hair. Someone will not have a hair, they will just begin to <laughs> and will do fire. You will say, ah! <laughs> say, what, what? You say, what is this? I'm praying for someone. I said, Holy Ghost fire. I did not know that it was a wig. <laughs> I said, fire. Ah, I just found. Ah. I looked at it. I said, ah, are you the one? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening? And after decoration, you will not know. She will look like she's 15. Change the step. Will you know? <laughs> and when you marry in the morning, wake up in the morning and say, Hey! What is this? <laughs> like Jacob. Jacob woke up in the morning. I think that was a case of Jacob. Yeah, that was a case of Jacob. Because Jacob, when he woke up in the morning, that's when he realized, he said, ah, what is this? God does not want you just to be a liability. Amen. God wants you to be a contributor. Amen. If you have never contributed anything to the kingdom of God, you are worse than a non-believer. Amen. That's the reason every day I must come here on this platform to preach to you, to make you receive Jesus. This is not a joke. These are realities. Amen. These are realities. If me, I was a comedian, I wouldn't have been giving you audible power. The difference between us and comedians, we speak with power. God wants you to bring souls. That's the reason. When you go through the what? The fish gate. God expects you to be a winner. Amen. Say, I am a winner. I am a winner. Say, I am a winner. I am a winner. Evangelize to your husband. Even, even if when he's drunk. He's drinking beer. He's drinking beer. He say, ah, pastor, pastor, pastor. How are you, pastor? Every day, call him pastor. When he takes one, he says, ah, pastor, pastor, you are doing very well. Pastor, ah, you, one day you preach to me. You know what you are doing? You are planting a seed. You are Amen. sowing a seed. Amen. You are sowing a seed. You are sowing a seed. 
If you, you married women, if you want to change your husband, if you want your husband to follow you, let me tell you, don't begin to fight him. Don't begin to follow him like a monitoring spirit. <laughs> like a monitoring spirit. Wherever, wherever he goes, you are like MTN. <laughs> you are everywhere. No, don't follow him. Give him liberty. Give him space. Give him space. And whenever he, he does something, continue prophesying. The Bible says a good woman buildeth her own house. With what? With wisdom. 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 Wisdom in what? Wisdom in prayer. Wisdom in fasting. Amen. So you build it. You build it. You build it. You pray for him. You also, when you look at him, when you look at him, you say, you, you know my husband, you are the best gift. Because the devil expects you to utter a, a, a demonic word. And every demonic word that you utter shapes the destiny. You say, you tell him that, hey, you are a drunkard. Tomorrow, he will come is very drunk. Because it's a seed. But the moment you begin to prophesy and you begin to encourage him, you begin to encourage him, you begin to pray for him. A certain lady came to me and said, Papa, my husband is giving me a problem. I said, my daughter, don't complain now. Begin to pray for his salvation. Amen. Pray for his salvation. Pray for his salvation. It is the devil that is after this man. Pray for his salvation now. Thank God that God has allowed you to marry this man. And you can see mistakes. The one who is bound does not see any mistake. That's the reason. A person who is bound does not know that he is demon possessed. Amen. He doesn't know. It takes another man to come and tell you, say, you, you have got Shonongo. <laughs> say Shonongo. Shonongo. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a devil in my language. In my language, it's called Shonongo. Om Jerekezi. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Say, I will go through. I will go through. The fish gate. The fish gate. You know, all the people that knew me, I can tell you, all the people that knew me, I put them, all of them, all of them, all the people that knew me. This one, his father was working for me. This one, this one, he's grown up in my eyes. His father was working for me. He was my pastor eight years ago. And I buried his father. This one, I buried his father. And I, I, I prophesied to him eight years ago. I said, I will raise you. And up to now, he's still with me. Amen. Amen. Eight years ago. Amen. I prophesied to his father. I said, this is what will happen. This is what will happen. This is what will happen. And when he died, I said, okay, I'll take him. I'll take up his butter. I'm your dad. I've been supporting, there are two of them with their, with, their sister, with their sister. I've been supporting them from their childhood. He finished his school. Now he's doing well. Amen. And I'm raising him up now. Amen. 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 Anyone, I'm telling you, anyone around me, Anyone around me, I've made sure, I've made sure that I impart something in them. Amen. Who have you ever imparted? Who have you ever invited to church? Who? Sit down. Who have you ever invited to church? Your brothers are busy dying. They are busy dying. You will still have their phone numbers. Why can't you invite them to church? You say that they are very stubborn. Continue talking about the miracles. Continue talking about the testimonies. Continue bragging about your church. Amen. You can use your church as a source of encouragement and testimony. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. Anyone around me, I've made sure I've imparted in one way or another. That's the way life must be. That's the way life must be. That's the way life must be. If you are a man that you have never imparted anyone, you are a barren man. A barren man. That one, that one there, Ian. Ian. I knew him a long time from school. From school. From school, I put him. He's my son. I'm teaching him. Anyone who you don't impart, you can't sustain. Amen. Anyone you don't impart, you can't sustain. Amen. I've been with my sons. They have known me now. They know that, oh, that is like that. I've got two of my sons. They know my spirit. That's the reason I even said, okay, son, you know, the way I'm able to access every son of mine. 
I know has got bread. I know has got water. I know has got juice. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I know, I know. Because let me tell you, being a father, you know your sons. Amen. You know, this one is wise. This one, mm. water. This one, juice. This one, pap. <laughs> Are you listening? I, I spoke to my sons. I said, look, sons, uh, uh, we need to do this. We need to do this. I had a vision. We must enter into this. We must enter into this. And they listen. They listen. They listen. Because I've noted out their potential and their capacity. Let me tell you, if a prophet must die very fast, let him employ people that are not qualified. With his anointing, his anointing will annoy him. I don't want to finish before my time. I don't want. That's a reason God must connect a prophet. A prophet must, must be able to impart what he knows. And people, let me tell you, the goodness with a prophet, a prophet can be able to change himself in anything. Amen. You don't know. He can change himself to anything. I can go, I can, imagine, I was with a certain politician, a certain politician, I sat, I sat down with him, and I was talking politics, and my sons were looking, like, ah, dad, do you know politics? Are you a politician? I said, I know all these things. Because before you become a prophet, God must give you the whole syllabus. Amen. Imagine you come to me, you begin to tell me about, uh, 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 you begin to talk about uh, economics. And I say, eh, hey, mm, hey, God will bless you. That's the reason you will fail as a prophet. Amen. You will what? Amen. You will fail. There is a time of empowering yourself by people that are around you. Amen. That's the reason, that's the reason select people that are wise. So, they are wise. I try to talk to them. They understand me. They understand my vision. And yesterday we are launching. We are launching our, our first uh, 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 launch of cement, which was a success. Amen. Put our two hands for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Even if the devil is annoyed, if he's annoyed, let him commit to, uh, suicide on a tomato tree. It is already done. He can't reverse it. Amen. He can't. We are forging ahead. We have got other things to do. Because we believe. Imagine. 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 If you did not come to church. There wouldn't have been a service. Amen. So someone. Must come to church every day. Amen. So every day you must win souls. Never in your life stay the whole week without inviting anybody to Jesus. This is our life. We have trained ourselves to win souls. You know the reason why I can't go outside? Hmm? I empower you. I'm like the master, grandmaster. Amen. Amen. I do what? You I teach you. I empower you. After I empower you, go and pray. Amen. That's the reason this place is what? Is packed. Because of what? Because of what? So winding. The TV, the TV station is not, do you know, let me tell you something. Do you know that even the TV station does not bring money in the church? If you don't want to know. We pay it from the pocket, from our pocket. For what? For evangelism. Amen. So that people who have never seen Jesus, they can be drawn by the power. And I can tell you, I don't get anything from the TV. Apart from evangelism of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I'm winning souls, God will bless me on the platform Amen. of soul winning. That's the reason. Anyone who is a winner, number one, they cannot die. Number two, they cannot be sick. Number three, they can never be poor. Amen. Amen. There is a covenant attached to soul winning. Amen. Number four, there is what we call supersonic speed to overtake. Number five, excellency becomes your portion. That's the platform of soul winning. When you win souls, God becomes your sustainer. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous being forsaken. Amen. Why? 
they win souls and the Lord feeds them. We have never suffered in our lives because every time with my wife, we only think about you. We only think about you. I'm telling you. Sometimes we wake up, let's, let's call this person. Call this person. She will call, hey, I'm praying for you. This and that, this and that, this and that. This is our life. Sometimes, sometimes even my wife, she, I can't even take her out because of you. Too much problem. Because you go, you will go. You even my private number. I don't know how you discovered it. <laughs> but anyway, I must manage you. I don't know how even some people, some notorious, notorious sons of mine, they took my number. I don't know how. And I just say hello, Papa. I said, who are you? He said, Papa, you know me. <laughs> the next question, who gave you my number? Eh, Papa, I got it by the Holy Spirit. I said, which one? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We spend our time praying for people. Praying for people. Praying for people. Praying for you. You might not know how I pray for you until you find yourself in problem. Amen. One of my daughters, she was sick. She was sick. I went, what time did I go, my wife? It was zero what? <coughs> zero two. Zero two. She was sick. And she was operated. I went with her. Zero two. I said, this one is my daughter. I put on my pajama. I said, even if in my pajama, the power will still flow. Karusha, idazo, roko pakatia. In my pajama. I said, I am going there. She can never die. She can't die. This one, she's born of my born. She's a daughter. She's born out of my blood. And I said, you can't die. I went in my pajama. I said, don't worry. Even in my pajama, there's power. I went, pa, 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 pa. I just entered in the ward. I looked at her. She heard my voice. I said, my daughter, I've come. She screamed. I said, ah, daddy. I did not think that you can come. I said, my daughter, I have come to release you. I laid my hand. I said, every devil. After, after two days, she was discharged from the hospital. Let me tell you, if you don't have a man who has authority, you will die while you are laughing. You know, there are people who die while they are laughing. You say, hee, hee, hee. I've ever seen people, they are laughing while they are walking. Pooh! They die in a car accident because there was no any covenant. I can't die. There's a lot of people that have evangelized. One time I went to Zambia. I went to Zambia in a village in Lundasi. In a village. I was with my son. Where, where is this one? I was with him. I've never had that attack before. I've never had that attack before. I was, I vomited. Eh? Vomited the whole night. Vomited. I said, Lord, what is this? And the Lord, they said, where you are going, there is jabulos. Be ready. They wanted to kill me on the way. I had to tell this one. I said, son, stop. Let me gear myself. When I reached in that place, I have never seen such kind of thing. I reached on the crusade. The notorious chief of witchcraft. You know what happened? I'm saying fire, fire. They went, the whole, the whole town, they went and switched off the light. Off. Off. I said, that was a sign for me. I said, hey, I've landed now. So what I did, I told him, I told him, I said, take the car, take two cars. Just make sure that you switch on the lights. Even in darkness, these guys, they started, they provoked me. But I will show them also. Huh? 
I began deliverance in the dark. A certain demon came out. Say, hey. They go me down that way. They go me down. He knows. He said, Dikuma Danga, Danga. I asked him, What is Danga? He said, Punch. He said, I will punch you today. He said, We did not want you to come here. We knew that you would give us problem. There was manifestation. There are places that have gone to minister the word of God, not that I receive anything. It's for the sake of the love of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason sometimes you don't need to be paid. I, there's sometimes I'll just go. I'll just feel like just going in a certain place. I can even take you tomorrow. I will go with you maybe in any more. You will see. I'll just stand. I'll just say, call that person. You will see. I'll just mention one, two, three, four. You will see the person coming to church because I have understood soul winning. So winning is a platform of growth. If you want to grow, go outside there. Don't just, don't just be in your house. Don't just be in your church. Pastors, go out and evangelize. Where you know real pastors is where they must go out. Don't just sit. What are you contributing? Be so winners. So the fish gate, it is for what? Hey. The what? The fish gate is for what? Let me give you the last one. The last one. We go out. The last one. The last one. Oh, time is up. The last one. The next unto them repaired Meroth, the son of Uriaja, the son of Koz. And next unto them repaired Meshum, the son of Beriecha, the son of Meshebezo. Me, 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 Mezebel, and next unto them repaired Zakor, the son of Baan. And next unto them, let's read verse number six. Verse number six. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoda, the son of Pezia. Praise God. Now, the old gate, say the old gate. Now, now, look, 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 look. You are from the what? The sheep gate to the what? To the fish gate, from the fish gate to the odd gate. The odd gate, and this was a gate where old chambeles, old madalas, old people they were using to enter through the what? Jerusalem. So this gate, it is a gate of maturity. God wants you to mature in the church. There are some certain things you will hear in the church. God wants you to keep quiet. It is a place of maturity where God will allow you to see mistakes of the church. And God wants you to pray about it. Maturity is not having gray hair. Maturity it is how you handle yourself. Amen. There is a lot of immature pastors, immature prophets, immature priesthood members. God wants you to mature. God wants you to mature. It is a place of maturity. 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 When there's a problem, God wants you to handle it. God does not want you to leave the church. Anyone who leaves the church for the sake of a problem is immature. Is immature. God wants you to do what? To mature. So this gate, it was for old people. So it symbolizes maturity in the spirit. You have now matured spiritually. You want to preach, you are not mature. Your preaching is... No, mature first. This pulpit kills people. This one. It kills people. It kills people. A lot. A lot of people have died because of this pulpit. Because they were preaching without maturity. So preaching without maturity, they were just shouting people, shouting them, shouting them, shouting. And people decided to leave the church. When people come, God must give us the wisdom, the wisdom, the maturity to handle them. Are you listening to me here? Amen. That's the reason. If I don't handle you very well, you might go. So God must give me the ability to handle you with maturity. Even if I'm, I'm, I have the anointing, 
I must have the ability to respect people. There are people that I respect. I respect. I don't just impose, hey, no, 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 no. I respect people. So maturity, God expects you to mature spiritually, to handle things in a spiritual way. I've seen people in the church, in the church, fighting. They say, you, I'll beat you. You did not know that me, me, oh, don't play with me. Go and check my biography. They will show you who I am. I killed this. I killed this one. Even you. It's very easy. I will show you. In the church. Women in the church fighting. Fighting like chicken. Chicken. No, you took my husband. No, you took my wife. Ah. Has it become church? God wants you to mature. Amen. The odd gate is a place of maturity. Maturity in your preaching. Maturity in your prophetic. God wants you to mature when you are prophesying. Not just prophesying. Amen. There is what we call immature prophetic. You are, you are simply growing so you can't control yourself. So you just speak anyhow. Speak anyhow. You destroy people. You destroy people. You see, you see, you see, you see a couple. You see a couple. You go to a couple and say, you, eh? You man, eh? Eh? Leave that girlfriend. And the wife, you know, you know the wife, she's short-tempered. She might punch. I remember one day, one day, there was a fight in the church. There was a fight in the church. This prophet prophesied, he said, you, the prophet, what he was talking about, it was true. But he did not, he did not calculate. That's the reason. Even if your husband is, even if your husband has got what, I'll first look at you, your personality. There are, there are some of you I will not even tell you because I know you can even take a knife. You say, I'll not. Someone came to me. I said, you, do you know this person? Do you know this person? I said, this person is responsible of this. He said, oh, Papa! I said, now, there's remaining, there's remaining this kind of a person. He said, Papa, tell me the name. I... <laughs> tell me the name. I knew, I knew that if I tell something big will happen, it's better I keep quiet. So mature, you must mature in your prophetic. When you stand before a person, you must be able to evaluate. You must have the atometer. Are you listening? To measure, to measure the heart of a person, the habit, the character of a person. There are some people when you tell them, they will interpret it in their own way. So you must mature in your prayer. You must mature in fasting. You must mature in the word. You must mature. Say, I will mature. Lift your hands. Say, I will mature. Rise up on your feet. Lift your hands. Say, Father. Lift your hands. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As I go through. As I go through. The sheep get. The sheep get. I decide. I decide. To receive instruction. To receive instruction. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and pray that prayer. Pray. God wants you to pray. Pray, 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 pray. Lerush. Lerush. Shanto of Prakiana in Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. God wants you to be a soul winner, Amen. Ask yourself, 
if you had gone outside to evangelize about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, ask yourself how many would have come or followed you? Ask yourself that question. Start from your family. Start from the people that you know. Your phone. Begin to send them messages. Invite them for a Sunday service. Tell them about what God is about to do. Begin to encourage them. That's a way, that's the heart of, a, of, of somebody who is an evangelist. Somebody who wants to find out. Find out about a sister who is not coming to church. Find out. God does not want you just to be I don't care type. Don't be on the side of I don't care type. You don't care. You, you only think about yourself. Don't be like Ken. God asked him, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? God wants us to be a family. A family of love. A family that can evangelize. Start from your phone, your Facebook, your Twitter. Let it be a platform of winning souls. You check you check on my page, on my page. You will just see, you will, you will see everything is about God. Everything is about God. It's about God. Until the day I'll, I'll go to heaven, I'll still preach of this gospel because it is the power of God. Some of you, you the Bible says get back to your first love. Get back to your first love. You used to preach, you people. You used to preach. You used to preach. You used to come to church early in the morning. You used to fast. You are no longer fasting. All what you think is just making money. Now you have money. Look at your healthy. You used to love God. You used to work. You used to clean the church. And now you are not doing that. God is looking for something. A time is coming that you'll be in problem. And God will look for something that he may remember you. Ezekiah turned. He said, Lord, remember me of what I did for you. God, he will remember you on the basis of what you have done. May God remember you of that sister that you brought to church. I receive or you are not here this. I receive. May God remember you of that brother that you invited to church. I receive. God. There are some times when I, I, I face problems. I begin to tell God, say, God, remember me. God, remember me. God, remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Look at all these people. They are here for the sake of what you have put in me. Lord, use me. used to pray, you used to fast, you used to give. You are no longer doing those things. The love for the Lord is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. And the love of wickedness is increasing and increasing and increasing. You don't know, you no longer read the word. You're only concentrating with the t television on phone. God wants you to get back to him. Get back to him. You used to come to church early in the morning. You find a place to pray. You'll be praying. You'll be praying. Pray. You are no longer doing that. But this time, God wants you to get back to him. Get back to him. Get back to him. Get back to him. Amen. Somebody cannot offend you to stop praying. Somebody cannot limit you from coming to church. Christianity is not a religion. It is a fellowship. It is a personal fellowship. We must have fellowship with God every day. Amen. Every day of our life. Amen. Listen. Make a decision. There's a song that we used to sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I am this Let's sing it. To follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided once again. 
Come on. Lift up your hands. Come on, let's sing it. Sing it. Lift your hands. Come on. I have decided, I have decided to fall. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to f sing it like a prayer request. Come on. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No, no turning back. Come on. No turning back. Lift your hands, sing it, come on. Lift your voice. No turning back. 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 No Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just pray in the spirit. Say, I have decided. I have decided to follow you, God. I accept. I accept you as my Lord. I am my, made my words. I am made my words. I am made my words. Those that are watching, pray. Tell God, I have decided to follow you. No turning back. No going back to the world. No going back to drinking. I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my mind. I give you my soul. Lord, use me as your verse. Pray that prayer in Jesus' name. Pray. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. Shout it. Say, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I have decided. I have decided. To follow you. To follow you. I have decided. I have decided. To preach your word. To preach your word. I amend my words. I amend my words. I make my words straight. I make my words straight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I make a decision. I make a decision. Starting from today. Starting from today. To follow you. To follow you. To preach your word. To preach your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The last prayer point. I wanted to pray. Lord calls me to mature in the church. Lord calls me to mature in the church. God does not want you to have seven churches. God does not want you to have seven churches. Everyone has a house where they belong to. God does not want you to be a God. God wants you to be his sheep. He wants you to have a sense of belonging. God wants you to have a man. One man that you honor. One man that you respect. Where you can receive direction. I wanted to pray today. Lord cause me to mature. There's a lot of things that can disturb you. They can disturb your spiritual life. Maybe you heard something in the church. Maybe you saw something in the church. Maybe you heard people talking about you. Maybe you just see a group of people. They just don't love you. They don't want anything to do with you. Maybe you see that in the church, 
there's no position for you. And you feel like you don't have parts. Maybe you feel like a prophet doesn't love you. You feel like your pastor doesn't love you. Listen. God wants you to mature. God wants you to mature. Maybe you feel like your husband is giving you so much trouble. That's the reason you are not coming to church. Maybe you feel like God has just forsaken you. You feel like God has just turned his back on you. He's always closer. He's always there. He's always with you. Maybe you feel like the problems that I'm going through is just too much. It's better I just leave this issue of Christianity. When I was in the world, everything was all right. But now I've joined. I'm now a believer. Things have become worse. God wants you to wait for him. God wants you to wait for him. Now that you gave your life to Jesus, your husband left you. God wants you to believe in him. That some of you have problems and your problems have made you to stay at home. Your problems have made you not to pray. Your problems have made you to, be, to, 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 to do some crazy things. Listen, believe God. Believe God. The Bible says, fear not, O you Jacob. Fear not, O you Israel, for I have summoned you by your name. You are mine. When you go through the waters, the waters will not swallow you up. Amen. When you go through the fire, the fire will not kindle upon you. Amen. Because I am the Lord, thy God. Believe in him. I want you to pray for maturity. There are some people, they just got offended. They just got offended because somebody said something bad about them. And they said, no, I'll never, I'll never come again. I'll never come again. Sister, brother, it is your life. It is your relationship with God. Maybe you feel like, no, it's better I just stop coming to church. The devil is waiting for you. Fear him. Fear God. Fear God. And he will chase the devil away from you. My prayer for you tonight is that you may mature. See. My prayer for you tonight is that you may mature. I receive. You may fear him personally. Fear him. Know him. Walk with him. Not in a group. God wants you to fear him. God wants you to know him. Lift your hands. Say, Father. Father. I decide. I decide. To mature. To mature. In every circumstance. In every circumstance. Of my life. Of my life. I decree and declare. I decree and declare. From today. From today. I receive wisdom. I receive wisdom. And knowledge. And knowledge. On how to handle. Oh. On how to handle any issue, any issue that I meet, that I meet in my life, in my life, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Put your two hands for Jesus. <laughs> Clap your hands. Come on, give Him praise. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Take your seats. All those that are watching me on, on Facebook, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord increase you in Jesus' name. I want you to know that God wants you to go through the sheep gate. Not only the sheep gate, but he wants you to go through the fish gate. Not only the fish gate. He wants you to go through the old gate. A place of maturity. The fish gate is a place of soul winning. The sheep gate is a place of evaluation. God loves you. He's not condemning you. Believe him. And this coming Sunday, 
I invite you, be our guest. Be our guest. And uh, the Lord has told me, the Lord has told me, I have a program now. I have a program to meet everyone. To meet everyone. To meet everyone. Everyone. So every Sunday, all my visitors will be coming. As long you wait, I will meet you. I will meet you, talk to you, pray for you. Praise God. So I'll be having now a service for all my visitors. All those that will be visiting, I'll have a service. Since you want to see me, you cannot come out from a far place and just, just you going without meeting a prophet. It's better for me now to begin to pray for you. Hallelujah. So my concentration now is going to be on visitors and all those who want to meet me. This time, I'm crazy. This time, I'm crazy. This time, I'm crazy. So I wish to see you this coming Sunday. I invite you, come with your friend, come with your uh, colleagues, come with everybody that you know uh, for our service this Sunday. And I promise you that your life will metamorphose in Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. Put your two hands for them.